Okay, in these examples, I just want to do, you know, some more derivatives, but just some slightly more complicated examples. Um, so we're going to combine basically all the rules that we've seen. So let's start off with the first one here, x times sine of square root of x. So when I look at this, I first off see two things. I see the x term, or factor, I guess, and then I see sine of square root of x. So I see two things being multiplied, and that tells me first off I've, I have to use the product rule. But I also see the sine of square root of x term, and that means we're going to have to use the chain rule on it as well. Okay, so let's use our product rule. If I take the derivative of the x term, I'm simply going to get 1 and then I leave my sine of square root of x alone so nothing happens there and then I put a plus in between because I'm doing the product rule now I'll leave the x alone and this is where I have to be a little more careful okay so now I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of sine of square root of x well this is where we do from the outside in the derivative of sine is cosine and I leave the square root of x term alone. But now I have to move on the inside of that and multiply by the derivative of that. So I'm now going to have to multiply by the derivative of the square root of x. And again, recalling this is x to the 1 half, I will simply get 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And that'll be my derivative on that one. Okay. So the derivative of x is 1, I left the sine of square root of x alone, put my plus in between, left my x alone, I take the derivative from the outside in, the derivative of sine is cosine, leave the square root of x alone, the derivative of the square root of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And you could do a little bit of simplification here, typically you'll always pull the numbers out front, so we could pull the 1 half out front, and also I have x and x to the negative 1 half. Well, since I have like bases, you could add the exponents and combine this into a 1 half x to the 1 half. And remembering just to leave that term alone. Our next example here, we have cotangent squared of sine theta. And for me, a good way to always start these out was to simply rewrite it. So when they have the square, it means basically the cotangent is what's being squared. So an equivalent way of writing this is cotangent of sine of theta. All of that quantity is being squared. Okay, And now I see this more as a chain rule problem. It helps me get the order correct. So when I go to take the derivative, again I'm going to start on the very outside. Now to me the thing on the outside is the 2. So if it just said x squared, I would get 2x to the first. Well, I'm going to get 2, but now I have to leave the inside alone. Cotangent of sine of theta. And again, if I take 1 away from the power, I'll just be left with the first power. Now I have to move to the inside. The derivative of cotangent is, what is the derivative of cotangent? Well, it's negative cosecant squared. So normally the derivative of cotangent, I would get negative cosecant squared of theta. Well, in this case, I have a sine of theta in there. So I'm going to get negative cosecant squared, not of theta, but of sine theta, because that's what's inside of there. And I'm still not done yet. So I kind of took the derivative of the 2 here. I moved inside, I took the derivative of cotangent and got the negative cosecant squared of sine theta, but now I have to move inside again and take the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine of theta. And if you want to be really picky, you could say you could move inside even one more time and take the derivative of theta. And theta is just like having an x. The derivative of 1x is 1, so the derivative of 1 theta would just be times 1 as well. Okay. And there, there are a couple more examples.
So definitely combining the chain rule with the with some of the other rules, it can get a little a little confusing at times. Let's maybe do let's do one more here just for fun. We'll pretend it's for fun at least. So my next example here will be y equals sine of the square root of 1 plus x squared. And I think a lot of what confuses people in these classes is not necessarily so much the calculus concepts. People understand the chain rule and the product rule and the quotient rule. But sometimes just the order, I think, gets a little confusing. So again, I'm going to rewrite this algebraically. Anytime I have radicals, I usually write them as powers. If you feel really comfortable, don't do it. OK. And now the thing that's being raised to the 1 half power, it's not the whole sine of 1 plus x squared, right? The square root's only over the 1 plus x squared. So I'm going to write this to the 1 half power. Now, unlike the last example, the outside thing is not the 1 half, it's the sine. So when I go to take my derivative, the derivative of sine is cosine. I'll leave all of this stuff alone. So 1 plus x squared raised to the 1 half power. And now I'm going to move a little more inside. Okay. So basically, in my head, I'm forgetting about the sine, and I think, well, if this was my derivative, what would I do? Well, like the last example now, the 1 half will come out front. I'll leave the inside alone. I'll take 1 away. That'll give me to the negative 1 half power. But again, now I've kind of taken care of the sine part. I've taken care of the 1 half part. I still have to multiply by the derivative of 1 plus x squared. Well, the derivative of 1 simply is 0, and the derivative of x squared will be 2x. And that will be our derivative. So again, you could definitely clean this up. The 1 half and the 2 would cancel out. Notice this is all just multiplication. You could move the 1 plus x squared. You could make this all divided by 1 and put the whole 1 plus x squared in the denominator to the positive one half power. Um, not a whole lot else you could do with this one. Let's even do it just a little bit. So my one half and my two will cancel. So I'll be left with cosine of one plus x squared. And I will keep my brackets just to make it clear to the one half power. You can leave your x in there. And now we can put the 1 plus x squared. It'll move down to the positive 1 half. And again, you have to be careful. It's cosine of 1 plus x squared to the 1 half. Even though you do see this 1 plus x squared to the 1 half in the denominator, you definitely can't cancel those out, because then you would just be left with cosine of, of what? Of nothing. And you have to have cosine of something. So be careful about your simplifications. As a rule of thumb, um, for myself, I always thought if I wasn't positive whether or not I could simplify it down, I would just leave it alone. So I hope these few examples shed a little more light on it. Again, when you're looking at these problems, at the very beginning, just think, what rules do I have to use? Do I have to use the product rule, yes or no? Do I have to use the quotient rule, yes or no? And as you're stepping through them and taking derivatives of individual parts, think, okay, on this one is where I need to use the chain rule and just go from there.